You ever been in a gas station and some mangy bastard comes up to you and asks you for a couple of bucks? And he has some lame excuse that he needs to get gas to get home or something? What do you do in that situation? First, let me say that I have never given money to a panhandler in my whole life. Never. For reasons that should be obvious. If you want to help these people, giving them a couple of bucks is not going to help. It's actually going to make things worse. If you really want to help these people, you're going to have to get involved in their lives. And nobody wants to do that. So if you give them money, if you give them a couple of bucks, maybe they get something to eat. Maybe they eat for a day. But maybe they buy cigarettes or drugs or something like that. It does no good whatsoever. In fact, it does the opposite of good. You're making the problem worse. So I actually had a friend who was getting gas at a gas station and this mangy bastard comes up to him and says, hey man, can I have a couple of bucks? And my friend says, get a job. So the guy punched him out. Just cold cocked him, knocked him out right at the gas station and walked away. So when the cops came, when the cops came, they never caught the guy, but the cops told him, you know, just have five bucks in your wallet just for situations like these and just make the problem go away and don't cop an attitude is basically what they said. So, you know, being from New York now in New York, you get panhandled. There's panhandlers and they ask you for money and you just walk by. You just ignore them. You know, that's what you do in New York. I if somebody talks to me, if I'm walking down the street in New York and somebody talks to me, I just keep walking. It's a scam. It's always a scam. If somebody you don't know is talking to you, it's a scam. And that's how you're taught in New York. Now, I come down here to South Carolina and it's a little bit different. If I got somebody asking me for money at the gas station, if you ignore them, they get furious. They get really, really mad. So typically what I do is if I'm at the gas station and somebody asks for me for money, I just say, no, thanks. And that's the end of it. But you can't ignore them like you're in New York, you know. If you want to give to charity, there are a million ways that you can give to charity that are better than this. You're just perpetuating the problem. You're making it worse. So because if if the reason people ask for money is because they're successful at it. And if they do this 50 times a day and they get money, then they're going to keep doing it. If everybody stopped giving them money, then they would have to reevaluate their situation and possibly get cleaned up and get a job. It's all about incentives. It's about incentives. So by not giving them money, it's actually an act of love. It is. It's tough love is what it is. If you remember that book from the 70s, it's called Tough Love, you know. So if you want to donate to charity, how do you donate to charity? Well, You know, a lot of times I get hit up for money. Uh, Somebody will be doing some kind of fundraiser. They'll be running a race. They'll be something. And uh, they're, you know, it's for children's cancer or whatever. And I'm like, sure, you know, I'll throw in 50 bucks, 100 bucks, something like that. And I print out the receipt and I keep it for my taxes. And it's pretty simple. But sometimes people want to have more of an impact. And they want to donate even more money. So I've donated a large sum of money twice in my life, once to my high school to set up a scholarship and another time to a cat shelter. So for my high school, uh, they actually they have a big fundraising department. They have development people and it's it's very formal. You know, Uh, I got a contract with them and the contract spells out exactly what they can spend the money on, which is the scholarship and the terms of the scholarship in how I'm going to give them money over time. And we had to spell out exactly what the scholarship was for. If you're donating a huge amount of money, you probably want to make sure that there's a contract. If you're donating a hundred thousand bucks, you're going to be pretty upset if they don't use the money in the way that they told you they were going to use it. And that happens sometimes, you know, Uh, I love cats. I have six cats. And my thing is I want to rescue all the cats. And I'm very it's it's a very big cause of mine. And I donated money to a cat shelter. Their roof was literally falling in and it was caving in. 
And I actually had a fundraiser. Uh, I threw a party in New York. I had a fundraiser, raised some money, and then I chipped in the rest. And I went to them and I said, here is the money to get the roof fixed. Um, and we shook hands, but there was no contract. There was no contract. So then a couple months later, I followed up and I saw the director and I said, uh, you know, what what is this being used for? And she says, well, you know, we haven't gotten the roof fixed yet and whatever. And I'm like, gosh, like, I thought you would have had the roof fixed by now. Like, this is kind of troubling, you know. So they, I found out later they are getting the roof fixed, so it's not a problem. But it, it's one of these situations where there was no agreement in place. Like, you know, there's the donor's wishes of what this is to be used for, but it was totally unrestricted. You know, they technically they could have used it for anything they wanted and I would have no recourse, you know. So, so that didn't happen, thankfully. That didn't happen. How much money do you give to charity? So if you look at people's tax returns, people donate, I want to say, between 2 and 3% of their income to charity. And that doesn't seem like a lot, but relative to other countries, it's actually a lot. Like Americans donate more money. We are the most generous people in the world by a lot, you know, hands down. So now the rule of thumb is that you should be giving away 10% of your income, which is kind of like a tithe and... 10% is a lot. Giving away 10% of your income is pretty massive. Um, I've never done that. You know, I mean, I donate to charity. This, I guess it was 2021, I donated about 4% of my income to charity, which is still, it's still a lot of money, you know. Um, so 4% of my income, you know, I, I it, we look at presidents, we see their tax returns, except for Trump. But we look at their tax returns and uh, I, I, I want to say, I think Obama and Biden both gave, maybe not Biden, I think Obama had uh, given a lot to charity. I want to say it was 13% or something like that. I think Biden is lower than 10%. Um, some people, I, I hate to say this, there is such a thing as giving too much money to charity. There, it, That exists. There are people who give too much money to charity. I've known some people in my life that have given as much as 20% to charity, and they were financially struggling. Um, but it was important for them to give that money away, but they were, you know, they had a lower standard of living as a result. So my sentiment on that is as follows, okay? If you're a working adult, if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and you're working, you should be making money and saving and investing and letting that compound over time, okay? Um, I am in favor of giving less money to charity in your early years and more money to charity in your later years. I mean, if you even if you look at people like Warren Buffett, you know, the guy has not given a lot to charity in his lifetime, but he signed the giving pledge, which basically said he's going to give it all away when he dies, which is about 90 billion dollars. And that's you know, that's terrific. But the point is, is that if he was giving away 10% of his income every year up until now, that money would have not been invested. It would have, it would not have compounded and he would have less money to give at the end. So by giving less earlier and more later, you can actually give more money in the long run. Okay. Now the argument to that is, you know, there are people who need the money now. There's causes that need the money now. And I understand that. But if, if you're talking about, you know, actually doing good, you can do more good if you invest now, if you invest wisely and well and save that money and it let it compound and then you can give more at the end. OK, I can tell you what I'm going to do. You know, when I get into my 60s and I'm close to retirement, um, we're going to be giving a lot of money away. We're going to be giving away. I mean, I'm going to be writing $5,000 checks, $10,000 checks to cat rescue organizations all across the country, you know, because that's my thing, cats. Um, and you, you you may be like, what? Like, why, why would you give to that cat rescue organizations? And I'm like, yeah, we have our pet causes, no pun intended. And maybe the things that you're interested in, I'm not interested in. You know, I mean, maybe you have kids and you care about childhood cancer. I'm like, well, I don't have kids. I have cats and I care about cats, you know, so my goal is to save all the cats. What's yours? 
I used to go to church when I was a kid, and I remember this very vividly. I'd, I'd be in the pew with my mom, and they'd pass the basket, and my mom would put one or two dollars in the basket. And that was 1982. So a dollar in 1982 is, I don't know, I guess ten dollars today or something. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but I, was, I, I didn't go to church for a long time. And when I moved to South Carolina, I said, well, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And I went to church in 2010. And I probably went to about eight or nine services. And after a while, the priest comes up to me and he says, hey, let's, you know, do you want to be a member of the church? Let's, you know, come in my office. We'll talk about it. So I go to his office and we sit down. And the first thing he says, before anything else, anything else, but it, the first thing he says is 10% pre-tax. That's what you have to give. We didn't talk about religion. We didn't talk about spirituality. We didn't talk about Jesus. The first thing he wanted to talk about was the money. So, well, this is kind of a turn off. Um, so at the time I was making, I was making less money at the time. I was making about 350,000 a year. And I said, there's, there's no flipping way. I'm going to give you $30,000, $35,000, not a chance. It's not happening. So I didn't go back to the church, you know? So I was just a little surprised. He was so focused on money. I, I maybe I shouldn't be surprised. But charitable, charitable organizations are very important, and they do, they do most of the work in taking care of people that the government doesn't. The government is really bad with charity, okay, because the incentives are all screwed up. In communist countries, there is no such thing as charitable giving. Charity does not exist. It's all done by the government. One thing I've learned over the years, it's good to donate anonymously. I'm a big fan of donating anonymously, except in the case of the scholarship, uh, which is going to be in my name. And that's for a specific reason, because I'm an alumni and all that stuff. But uh, I do like to donate anonymously. People don't need to know what I'm doing, what I'm donating to. You know, it's not it's not about me. Let's put it that way. It's not it's not about me. And I remember being a kid and I walk into an art museum and I'd see the list of donors and, and up on the top, it would say anonymous. And I'm like, why would anybody give anonymously? And I'm like, no. Yeah, now I understand it. It doesn't have to be about you showing off. So I, I'm actually surprised there isn't more money donated anonymously. Or maybe I'm not. People like to show off. That's also a pretty good way to make sure your kid gets into a certain college is to donate a building. The whole college admission scandal was funny because these were people who were pretty rich, in some cases super rich, and there's sort of an acceptable way to make sure your kid gets into school, which is to donate a lot of money. Um, they had to cheat and do it the wrong way. But the, that, that, that whole situation is screwed up. So give what you can, invest the rest, let it compound, and then give it all away at the end. That is my advice. And remember, I don't have any kids, so I really am going to give it all away. In other news, I just got back from Dallas. The party was fantastic. The guys there, they're called, they call themselves Fairy Tale Productions. They put it on. It was actually really, really well done. Like, I was, I was really impressed. And I'm very thankful to those guys for inviting me out. Uh, if you want to see me in New York, I'll be playing on Friday, April 1st at Dew Supper Club. Starts at 7 p.m. Want to see you there. Thanks for listening to the Be Smart Podcast. I'm Jared Dillian. See you next time.